don't depend fully 100% on these uh, tools because as an individual, as a data scientist, you want to keep improving your human capital. Yeah. Your human capital. So you're developing human capital. This is what's going to keep you at the top of your profession. But anytime a tool comes in that can enhance your practice, you should embrace it fully. Welcome to a very unique session of business data science with Delali. And today I have with me here my very good friend, uh, Dr. Augustine Dente. So Augustine is a professor of economics. Uh, he teaches in Davidson College in North Carolina uh, currently. And uh, th the reason why today is very special is that Augustine and I are actually in Ghana, our home country, uh, and we are actually organizing or implementing, is implementing, organizing, <laughs> whatever it is. We are actually running a conference or hosting a conference here uh, called Ghana Data Science Summit, which we do in collaboration with uh, Deep Learning in Daba. So we also call it in Daba X uh, Ghana. And throughout the discussions, you know, about data science and how to get better, add more value with data science, there is one thing that I have noticed, which is the kind of training that we give to people today in data science uh, kind of have some challenges and giving all the popularity of data science. You know, we have people from different fields like electrical engineering, you know, nutrition, bio biochemistry. All of these people are coming and doing some form of data science work. Uh, but sometimes they, they miss off some of the fundamentals. So, you know, we want to tackle one question today. And since I have with me Augustine, who also is a data scientist and, and does some consulting, you know, with data work, I, I want to hear from you. What do you think, you know, since you also teach, what do you think is, 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 you know, is one of the best ways to teach people how to properly do data science so that, you know, they can truly solve business problems problems or you know actually tackle the right research questions with the right methodology because i see a lot of these things missing you know sometimes people are not getting basic statistics because they are already electrical engineers and they just jump into data like what are some of the ways that we we should be training data scientists these days uh, so that they can all take advantage of this unique opportunity that data science provides Excellent. Thank you so much, Delali, for having me. We are excited to be here on the campus of Ashesi University, as Delali rightly pointed. And I'm excited to be here for the very first time on Business Data Science with Delali in no place better than our home country, Ghana. Uh, of course, as an educator and as a data scientist, the subject of teaching uh, people about data science is dear to my heart. I think that you raised an important question. One of the fundamental skills that I think um, educators of data science have to preach and talk a lot more about is curiosity. You know, asking the right questions is a fundamental skill for any data scientist. Mm -hmm. And asking the right questions also, you know, relates to your understanding of the fundamental concepts, right? So I'll give you one practical example of how curiosity can enhance your, your data science expertise and also practice. So we all know that when you have maybe uh, a classification problem on an outcome problem which can take only two levels, one or zero, right? So uh, in general, most people can use logistic regressions for mm -hmm, those mm -hmm. types of tasks. And then of course, after running those logistic regressions, they might you know, predict or output some probabilities of that indicate the success event occurring, right? Now imagine a scenario where you use a more complicated model, say a random forest, and you end up in a scenario where some of those predicted probabilities are outside the unit interval. There's mm -hmm. one that is let's say 1.1 for example you know sometimes people do not take the time to even plot the distribution of those predicted probabilities especially if those are going to be used for further analysis such as shortlisting people or shortlisting customers for further uh, 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 campaigns or mm -hmm. programs right but a curious data scientist will ask why is my model predicting probabilities that are outside of the unit interval well we, in particular with random forest because a non-parametric tool those can happen when you use logistic regressions because of the fact that you use the sigmoid mm -hmm. uh, the function you have automatically constrained the probabilities to be between zero, zero and one yeah. but non-parametric methods depending on the sparsity of the data which in means depending on how um, the data are constructed you could end up in certain for certain units you know had have similar features leading you to you know, predictors that could be outside of the unit interval. But yeah. without a foundation understanding mm -hmm. of your outcome of interest, which is probabilities in this case, which we all know has to be with zero and one, you may not go further to ask that question. So I think that in teaching data science, when we should not only be focused on the tools, we should not only be focused on the methods, but the understanding of the methods and always push people to ask why. 
-hmm. Why is my model producing this result? Why is my data sh you know, showing this particular result? So I think that a key thing is asking the right questions. If we teach people to ask the right questions, if we teach them to be curious, we have a better chance of having data scientists who are going to be good at their jobs. So that's the first thing I will mention about educating data scientists. Yeah, so, so basically curiosity yes. is very key because that's what will help you understand the why behind things and ask more questions about your data and your result and your output, right? right. Uh, you also mentioned things about understanding probability, maybe yes. statistical distribution, yes. maybe the spread of data, yes. variances, standard yes. deviations, <laughs> yes. you know, those kinds of things, yes. right? Yes. So, okay, that's, that's very good. I 100% I agree on that because even in my own practice, you know, I see several people, you know, not really understanding even standard deviation. You right. know, you ask someone, oh, under what condition will standard deviation be zero? And then people are not quite sure, right, you know, right, you know right, what conditions right, uh, that is happening, right? right so right. I think that's very good. Um, I will ask you one more question, mm -hmm. and then we can end this this session, uh, which is nowadays, you know, we have this thing that AI mm. can do a lot of things. Yes. And so you know, you can be a data scientist once you know the questions to ask. You can just ask a system like ChatGPT or Claude to basically get your your output or the code, so you don't even necessarily need to understand, right. you know, how to code and all right, of that. Right. You know, as an educator, yes. what is your take on that? Well, this is a very uh, important question, and uh, we as educators, uh, in, especially in higher education, are the crossroads. Um, uh, we have a situation where now uh, large, lang large language models can help write code. Uh, for most of the subjects we teach people in statistics, right? So uh, I take the view that we have to be rethinking how we teach with these uh, tools that are becoming available. And, and, and that's a big challenge for educators. So I think that we have to teach people to use them, and, 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 but of course use them wisely. So here's going to be an example. Now, when word processes became available, mm -hmm. one of the concerns that people had was that word processes were going to make it harder for people to be able to spell well. Because now when you write something in Microsoft Word, let's say the word dilemma, mm -hmm. you might not know how to spell dilemma, but once you type it in the Microsoft processor, it's going to indicate you some spell checks and yep. to ask you to pick, you know, maybe select the correct answer. Uh -huh. Now, when they, those became available, people were concerned that word processors were going to make it harder for people to know how to spell. Uh -huh. Well, sure. Well, perhaps that could have impact whether someone can spell dilemma or not. But is that really important? Suppose I cannot spell dilemma, but I still understand sentence construction, mm -hmm. understand how paragraphs should be structured, and mm -hmm. have that basic understanding. Then spell checks is going to make me faster as my job. Yeah. So instead of focusing on sentence uh, uh, structure and construction, I will be focused on those and not be focused on whether I'm making a mistake spelling one word, right? Mm -hmm. So the same analogy applies to coding or data science in general. We want to have people using these tools to enhance their coding experience, right? So when I'm writing code now, I can be taking cues back and forth with, with ChatGPT or Claude or whatever tool you use such that my coding is enhanced. So when you're teaching me now about how to run logistic regression or how to write a complicated model from start to finish, we want to teach uh, you know, educators and students, and in fact, anybody who is doing data science, to be able to write code hand in hand with these tools that are available. Yeah. So, of course, people still need to know the fundamentals of coding. They should still be aware of you know, syntax you know, for various software that they are using, but we should teach them immediately at the start when they get introduced to Python or whatever software to be able to interact with ChatGPT right now. Yeah. Because that's going to be the future of how we code, yeah. right? So I think that, you know, so um, of course there has to be a concern about being able to use in the arts, for example, humanities. People can now generate long reports and, and, and term papers and yes. in fact theses with these tools. Yes, such use of uh, uh, the, the, these, these tools to generate papers which show no individual contribution of your own should be discouraged for sure. Yeah. And we all know this, right? Uh, so in that sense, I would say the future of education, especially with LLM, we should embrace as educators, but we should change the culture of how we interact with it. Yeah. So now code with these tools right from the start. And I think if we teach people to do that, we have the better chance of raising data scientists that are going to be efficient and also very going to be very good with time management. Because as you know, there are many questions that we ask ourselves with data that have to be answered with speed. 
Yes. Right? So if you have a tool that can enhance your ability to answer the question, we should encourage it. Yeah. Right? So, the, the, so to summarize, my point is don't depend fully, 100% on these uh, tools because as an individual, as a data scientist, you want to keep improving your human capital. Yeah. Your human capital. So you're developing human capital. This is what's going to keep you at the top of your profession. But anytime a tool comes in that can enhance your practice, you should embrace it fully. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, viewers and listeners, uh, uh, thank you for listening to us. I, I think I will say that two things we've talked about today, right? Number one is uh, that, yes, data science is a big deal now. Everyone is doing it. We want everyone to really use data and get a value out of it. But let's not forget the fundamentals. Let's make sure we are curious. We are asking the right questions, okay? Now, when it comes to using LLMs <laughs> for coding, absolutely, let's use that. But let's not forget the fundamentals. You know, let's partner with the AI tools. You know, because sometimes the tools can generate codes for you. Mm -hmm. Now there are some errors. If mm -hmm. you don't understand the structure and the fundamentals, right. you won't be able to, you know, really correct it and put some of this coding work in production, right? And so understanding the fundamentals and using the AI tools hand in hand uh, is very, very, very important. And so thank you, uh, Dr. Augustine uh, Dente, for, for having this conversation. Thank you for having me. me.